Welcome to the Year of Biology, and in this first video I'm going to introduce what we are going to be talking about, which is basically life, because that is what biology is about. Biology is the study of life. Bio means life, and biology then is what we do, is we study life. And so in this video we're going to start talking about life and what life is. Now in biology we study organisms. Organisms are living things. Small things like this bacteria that required a very powerful electron microscope to take such a good close-up picture of it. And things like you and me, human beings, the most perhaps advanced type of life form on Earth. But both are organisms. Tiny microscopic unicellular organisms or complex multicellular organisms with multiple subsystems. Both are alive. But all the life that you see on Earth today came from one original life form, a single unicellular organism which was the original life on Earth sometime over 3.5 billion years ago. The universe is almost 14 billion years old. Then you have the solar system at around 5 billion years. It's a child in the history of the universe. And then the Earth is a little younger than that at 4.5 according to modern science and geological studies. Life started a little while after that, by the time the Earth was cold enough and it had enough uh, circumstances for life to begin. And we'll talk about how that started later in the year when we talk about the origin of life. But life is everything from single cells, simple organisms to all the diversity that you see today, a little bit of which is represented in this picture. But all the life came from that single cell organism to what we have today. But this took a long, long time in a process that we called evolution. Regardless of how life started, the fact is that the life that is here now changes over time in a process where life comes from pre-existing life, explaining all the life that we have today. In fact, if you look at all the types of finches that you see in the Galapagos Islands, for example, came from one ancestral finch from South American mainland. But as they reached different islands, and in the islands, different environments put pressure for different traits, the birds that had accidentally developed that trait through mutations became more common in population, and eventually different kinds of finches developed in the Galapagos Islands off that ancestral. The same concept can be applied backwards into time to explain the sources of all kinds of birds. And that's the idea behind evolution. Like you see the horse family, for example. Most of the branches in the, in the history of life of the horses are now extinct. They no longer exist. They could, no longer, they could not cope with the changes in the environment. But some of those branches remain. And some of those branches we have fossil records to indicate that they once existed. But from the original horse from a long, long time ago when the earth was covered with, not, with the long glass lens that allowed them to develop, and then into the part of the world where the world was dry, and then finally to today where we have the modern equus version of the horse family. But as you see, it took a long time in a period that many of these branches did not survive. Now what it looks to be a continuous process that where, from where, by which this horse became that horse, it actually was a very long process by which several other branches that could have made it never did. Similarly, humans evolved from an earlier primate that may have looked like a monkey, but it's not like we came from monkeys. We came from something that us and monkeys both came from. So it's, it's like the forefather of both branches. And so we share common ancestors. It's the ultimate conclusion if you, were, if you think about the fact that all life comes from previous life. You have to accept at that point then that if you keep going backwards in time, all life must have come from one original life form or that single cell. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, the rationale for this when we do evolution later in the year. But for now, understand this about life. It's the study of organisms, big and small. And these organisms are a great variety and they came from one original life form over 3.5 billion years ago. And by now, these organisms constitute a great variety where you can see this awesome tree of life that I found online and Chris King's website and he's a kind of weird guy but definitely very cool stuff that you can find on his website. This is one of his tree of life that he made that includes a really good description of the living branches of the tree of life. But for all the branches that you see here, many other branches that used to be were no longer around. They were pruned. They did not make it. They went extinct. But this is a good way to differentiate the phylogeny of, the, of life. A big, all the awesomeness of the families that exist are, seem to be uh, represented here. And if you ask yourself then, where is this life and how much life is out there? The answer is millions and billions. Throughout history, 
millions of species have existed. The fossil record tells us so. But the fossil record only preserved a few of the, of the species that existed. And so you can expect that millions and millions of species have existed. And still today, millions exist. Every year we learn about a thousand new species at least that evolved, even though extinction rates are also quite high right now. Thousands of species are also dying every year because of the changes that are happening to the world, including global warming and human deforestation and habitat destruction. But still, every year scientists discover new kinds of life. And so there's a lot of life out there. There's a lot of life that exists now. There's a lot of life that had existed and went extinct. Life is incredibly diverse. And it's everywhere. You will find life in the vis vicious places and in the beautiful luscious places like the rainforests or the coral reefs which are most abundant biodiverse ecosystems of the world. One in the water, one in the land. You can also find life in the dry deserts, in the darkness of the bottom of the oceans, in the coldness of the Arctic, in very salty environments like the Dead Sea, acidic environments like volcanic vents, and also on the top of mountains in the deepest of the valleys. Life is simply everywhere on earth and that proves that life will find a way and this is a, which is a quotation for, for Jurassic Park that I really really like but life is beautiful there's a lot of variety it's been around for a very long time and there's a lot that you need to learn about it and there's no way that one year of biology will teach you everything that you need to know about life but I hope that we will get to get a little overview of what, uh, wonderful things that you have to learn about when you learn biology and Hopefully, also, you get to do some biology when you go to class because that's what the whole flip class is about, freeing time for you to actually experience biology in class. I hope you're ready for this. I hope you're ready for a journey through life. On the next video, we start talking about it by discussing the characteristics of life.